Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to use an all-purpose plow from Dirt Dog on a 1025R. We're going to keep it going with the spring tilling for some seed prep later this year. We're going to help with the, uh, the preparation for the screening plot that we're going to put in along kind of the perimeter. So we used a ripper previously. The ground was a little bit too frozen. I think we're probably close to a month beyond that date now. We've had plenty of warm temperatures. I don't think we're gonna have an issue. And now this is not gonna go down into the earth as far as that ripper or that subsoiler would do. So I don't think we're gonna have as big of an issue. I've never used one of these before. I've always kind of been a tiller guy, right? But I'm trying to branch out, try some new things, give it a shot, see how it works. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. Now Dirt Dog makes these APPs, all-purpose plows, in various sizes. So this is a smaller one, about four foot wide, maybe a hair over that, but it's gonna be three shanks or three rippers. They're all spring loaded too. So as you're going along, it's gonna have some give to it, some flexibility. So if you hit a, a rock or a root or something else, or just have some resistance, it's gonna, it's gonna kind of give and go over top of it a little bit and come back down. I think we'll probably have to do multiple passes. Now I'm excited to play around with it, see how it works. You can see this is quick hitch compatible. You can also hook it up directly to a category one three point hitch. We are a dirt dog dealer. We sell and ship all over the country. This is amazing. Made in America product. So if you're looking for something pretty affordable to cultivate or till up, prepare your earth, this could be a good option for you to consider. Oh yeah, and one last thing, uh, Dirt Dog does recommend seven horsepower per shank. So three shanks here, 21 horsepower. Off the top of my head, I can't remember if that is engine horsepower or PTO horsepower. This is not using a PTO, so I would tend to think they're referencing engine horsepower. So we should be just fine. I can't envision this having a problem, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. Hey, really quick, not to interrupt, but this is part one of a two-part video, all right? We're gonna compare the results of an all-purpose plow versus a tiller. Let you make your own decision on what works best, what has the best finished results. We're gonna use a subcompact tractor, a 1025R. So this could apply to any tractor out there, but we're talking about the subcompacts right now. There are attachments out there sized appropriately for small tractors, medium tractors, big tractors, you name it. So make sure you're subscribed to see part number two.
All right, so we're part way through. I have a down and back and a down and back, so four passes total, but we're gonna go over it again, kind of figuring this thing out. Thought it was gonna be just to drop it down and go uh, right out of the gate, but started hitting a few roots and it would actually bog this thing right down its track. So you do have to feather that three point depending on your terrain a little bit up and down. Um, when it would really hang up and I'd be sitting there spinning, if I let, let go of the throttle, let my foot off the gas, it would actually, these spring loaded tires would actually slightly pull the machine backwards. It was kind of funny. Other than that, it's a piece of cake, you know? So just keep your hand on that, that three point or maybe don't go down all the way, just go down part way, something like that. And you're gonna be okay. This is what it looks like with one pass. It doesn't, well, there's a lot of untilled ground in between where those furrows are at. Uh, so we're gonna go through and try to dissect the difference there. Maybe one additional pass can get it done. You could take multiple passes, I don't know, but this isn't very hard. This took maybe 10 or 15 minutes to go down and back a couple times. Really easy to do, nice day to do it. We're learning as we go. Now you guys may have noticed this sweet looking canopy right up above me, and this is a rhino hide canopy, all right? Mr. Don McCoy founded this company, and my brother and I were privileged enough to be able to purchase this from him at the beginning of the year. So now, rhino hide is something that we can sell you directly. Now this canopy is unique for several reasons. Number one, it's very lightweight, all right? So this is a one person job to take it on, to take it off. You have a couple of wing nuts here that you just loosen up, you can slide it right off, so if you want to take it down the road, or if you want to put it in your garage, it's easy enough to do with one person. All right, it weighs, how much does it weigh? Yeah, it weighs 15 pounds, so it's very lightweight, but Rhino Hide, that name suggests something. This thing is tough as nails. I'm telling you, we drove over it with a 5,000 series tractor, so that thing weighed, I don't know, over 10,000 pounds. Don has shot this thing with a shotgun. Uh, we dropped 40 or 70 pound weights on this thing. It didn't break. This thing is meant to be indestructible, all right? That's a downside of a lot of canopies. They're big and bulky, they're heavy, and they're gonna get damaged if you hit a tree limb or a tree branch or something else. So this is meant to solve all those pain points. It's made out of uh, similar to that bed liner type material, like a drop-in bed liner in your truck. So if you know what that is, you know those things can take a beating, so can this. <laughs>
Okay, lessons learned from pass number two. This first one I'm a little bit embarrassed about and I kind of let you guys down. At some point, four wheel drive early on, I think disengaged. So I was in two wheel drive and I think that's why I was spinning my wheels, literally. I wasn't even paying attention to the front wheels not spinning, but just on the way back, down and back on the second pass, the first time back, I noticed the front wheels weren't spinning and I was like, what the heck's going on? I disengaged the four wheel drive somehow. So I re-engaged that. That seemed to make a world of difference being able to put that plow deeper and just carry on a lot easier. But this is a very rough ride. That's what I'm finding out. Very hard to stay on line where I want to go. The first pass was easy. The second pass was very challenging with all these big clods all around. Who knows, maybe the third pass will be a little bit easier as it kind of breaks them up a little bit. I don't know, but I got to try to get in between these rows and that's been a challenge. Hopefully this third pass knocks it out. So third pass, three more observations for you. Number one, this ride does not get any easier. That was like riding a Bronk and Buck there for a while. It just constantly wants to go back into the same furrows that have already been created. So it's very hard to try to keep it aligned and, and, and dig up more earth. Um, I found it was easier. I was trying to use the outside of the, of the tire to line up with this outside uh, tying, but I found it easier to use the center line of the hood to try to stay in the middle of a row instead and then match up with the center tine here. The third observation is actually, I didn't bottom out in my seat once and I noticed it late in the third pass and I had forgot I had this little air bladder thing that I put in here, a little um, inflatable shim it is. And I put that in here and it's really helped prevent bottoming out completely on this seat and it kind of just sprung into my head. That was the reason why because I was hitting some major bumps this whole time. This whole machine was rocking and rolling. That was a pretty uncomfortable experience after the first pass. And we don't have a lot of big boulders here. There's a lot of smaller rocks that are strewn throughout. And this was an overgrown field that had a lot of autumn olive and other things in it too. So I think we were hitting some roots there, but this is pretty easy conditions to work in overall. Now I can't say this is my number one tool. Part of me wants to go grab a tiller and just make a pass right next to it to see how it looks but maybe we'll do that in another video. Now, I don't want to make it seem like it's all bad. I mean, it's a decent tool. It's cheaper than a tiller. There's less moving parts. There's no gearbox, PTO shaft, anything like that. It's a lighter piece of equipment. So, I mean, overall, you can see the results here. This is what my grandpa's fields used to look like every year, it seemed like. So this will work, but I just think personally, a tiller does a lot better job with just one tool where we've tilled virgin ground all over out here and just one pass or even a second pass and it's just a completely level even consistent seed bed that's prepped and ready to go without doing anything else this just doesn't quite hold a candle to it so anyway if you are looking for something to help till up your ground whether it's a plow a disc a tiller we're happy to help we sell and ship all over the country check out goodworkstractors.com and if you enjoyed today's video we'd love to have you tag along hit that subscribe button right down below 
I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.